like to introduce Fred Veal from Canada Curling Stone. He's going to give us a demonstration or uh, explanation of some of the different types of curling stones and how they work. When it comes to curling stones, there's two aspects that we're looking for. One is the ability of the running surface to perform well and last on your ice conditions. The next side of the stone is the striking surface and how well they're able to take years of abuse and pounding and deterioration on the striking surface. Okay. The green structure of the makeup of the granite is valuable when it's a finer grain for the running surface to give you slow wear, uh, denser granite, less moisture penetration, so there's less deterioration on the running surface. The downfall of the same size particles is the wear resistance is great, but the impact resistance is not. So they can't, they can't absorb that shock? They can for a while, but it's like a pothole in the road. Once you start to get deterioration of the striking surface, it rapidly deteriorates. Maybe at this point we can talk about that too, the striking band, because at that point they're easy enough to bring back in and get them fixed and you're not losing a lot of material because you're not getting a deep, deep penetration, correct? In the rebuilding process or when we talk about uh, reprofiling striking bands or remachining striking bands, unless you can get to new granite and get below all the chipping, it's just there, it'll set up and it'll start again. This is an original stone and as you can see with the shape of the striking surface, there's still a fair bit of shape there to it. When you stand it on a table, it's not gonna stand there very easily. Right. This striking surface still has a lot of years of wear before it needs work. Right, okay. This one is at the other extremes. This striking surface is very flat, very sharp edges, can stand quite easily. And, it, and it's actually starting to get a little concave. Yeah, it'll depend a little bit there. This is where you start to have performance issues with stones. Also, you have deterioration issues once you start to get a sharp edge on granite, then you'll start to get splintering. And that's the point where you have to do something with the stone. Otherwise, you'll end up with large chunks out of the side of the stone. And then there, at that point, it's not, then you need not repairable. To, exactly. I guess what we've come to now is we've, we've taken the best of both worlds by producing an insert stone. An insert stone, basically, is a way to produce a blue hone stone. The combination stone was, a, was the idea of taking a blue hone granite, in other words, a disc of blue hone material, and installing it into a Trevor casing. Okay, so you're getting the best striking band and the best running surface. Correct. Right. You get a running surface that can withstand moisture, slow to wear, right. but you're also getting a striking surface that can take the pounding. When they come out of your factory, what's the last process that you do to the stones? The last process that's done to a stone is what we call a break-in. And essentially, it's a roughing of the running surface. In other words, if we left the stone fully polished, it would have to be played for several years before the stone would get enough aggression on the running surface. In other words, enough surface texture, surface roughness to be able to grip the pebble to curl nicely. Okay, so which brings us into rocks that curl and don't curl. How do we make these rocks curl? The first thing you need is you need consistency. If you've got consistency and you've got reasonable speed, then curl is your only issue. Then the, the changing of the running surface texture, call it sandpapering, call it texturing. Enhancing. Enhancing. There's Enhancing. lots of names lots for it. Of names for it. <laughs> In reality, we're roughing the surface. And I think that's a, um, a question that a lot of clubs have right now is, is um, should they paper their stones? Should they enhance their stones? Should they, what was the word you used? Texture. <laughs> Texture the their stones, used. okay. Um, and I, I guess my big question is, when do you think they need that done? I know as an ice maker, my first thing to the club is I tell them is check your ice. Yes, rocks are very slow to change. So a rock's performance isn't good one week and poor the next week. It's a slow changing process. So again, the consistency has to be there. If things are, if you're really comfortable with your ice and things are consistently straighter than you'd like them to be, but they are consistent week to week, then it's a viable option. If a stone's running surface is too narrow and you tend to enhance it, that stone's gonna dig in. It's gonna, it's just gonna be slow. If the stone is extremely wide, in other words, when we're talking wide, we mean seven millimeters or wider. When you do that stone and make it aggressive, it's going to hook like crazy at the end because you've got so much surface area onto your pebble. A nice combination, and again, what we consider a nice combination, is a running surface that's in the 5.5 to six millimeter range. Running surface width, 
with nice soft edges so we're not carrying snow. Those are the rocks that you can do work with. Pretty much you can have the curl you want with a little bit of care and some knowledge. Basically the last um, process that we do is, again, is a roughening of the surface. The general principle of how we're doing it is we're putting a scratching or a grain structure in the stone. And again, the process is again control. Mm -hmm. The fixture we have has stops on it. Right. So that limits the amount of stroke you've got, keeps you consistent, stone after stone. And it's sitting on, it's sitting on granite? Yeah, right. we have a granite surface plate, which gives right. us a flat, solid surface to work on. Yep. The clamping device strictly holds the paper in place. Uh, paper selection has to be a knowledgeable decision. Uh, you can't run down to your home hardware store and, and buy a, a aluminum oxide paper. Yeah. It has to be a silica carbide paper. Yeah, and I think the paper, I think that's a good thing that if, if they're interested and want to know about the rocks, that they can contact one of the CCA National Ice Techs or yourself, and we can talk about that. So, yeah. And then the process, strictly, is a straight line push with a pull, and then a rotation. So the same process over. And then we'll go to the other side of center. Now that'll give us a running surface that has some surface roughness. And it's very evident when you first do the stone. As the stone gets played, this will disappear. You'll never see it. Right, and you yeah. can clean this off with uh, uh, rubbing alcohol or uh, camp fuel or something. Yeah, that's just a dusting, a combination of, of granite dust and a little bit of dust from the paper. Right. Okay, in closing, I guess the last thing I'd like to say is uh, I don't want all the clubs running out right now to buy sandpaper and try and fix their rocks. Um, what I'd like you to do is possibly contact the CCA, have them get you in touch with one of the national ice technicians, contact Fred Veal at the Canada Curling Stone. It's something that you have to look at as a board and as you're with your ice maker to make sure you're making the right decision. Um, so let's not just run out and do this, let's think about it and your club may need to have it done.